Hi! In this video I'll be talking about uh, how to connect a chain. The, uh, ch connecting chains is, is important when you are mounting chains on a bicycle and when you are cutting them to size. We'll explain in a separate video how to determine the optimal length and size of a chain for bicycles with single speed and with multi speeds and in a previous video I've explained bicycle chain construction so I won't be uh, spending too much time on that but here we will talk just about how to connect the chain and here we have some chain models this is a single speed chain this is a six speed chain here we have an eight speed chain and a nine speed chain these models are typical because chains for single speed are the the widest one on the outside and the inside chains for six seven and eight speeds have pins just like this, the single speed chains that go all the way out and chains for nine and more speeds have so-called hollow pins that are flat with the outer chain uh, plates and that is important when we are connecting them to to keep in mind one of the simplest ways that I love the most when I'm connecting chain is using these these are called quick links there are three different models of quick links here this is one that we often see on single speed chain for connecting chain using a quick link you need to have both ends of the chain with the inner plates and just the rollers between and these quick links act as a pair of outer plates here we have a chain construction to demonstrate this is a pair of inner plates and a pair of outer plates and chains are connected using many links such as this there are some half link chains that uh, have uh, angled plates so that you can disconnect them using just one one pair of of links not inner and outer plates but i i don't have any of those to show now they're used for single speed bikes that don't have enough room for the uh, adjusting chain tension but again we won't be going into this most the vast majority of chains are, are like this and here we'll show this is the single speed quick link and the way to use it is to use this and put it through one end and through the other end then you put the other plate on the outside and then you have this pin to push all the way you put it like this over one one side and you push it firmly against the other these pins on this kind of quick links protrude a lot and they have a section I'll show it here you can see they have this like indentation and this is where this locks in when you press it so in order to connect the chain using this kind of quick link you just put this on Put this over it and press real hard in order to disconnect it you need to push this out and for that you can use a screwdriver it takes a bit of convincing a bit of force Okay, it's out, definitely. You won't be seeing these kinds of quick clicks on multi-speed chains because this protrudes a lot to the outside even when uh, the other link is put. So it would prevent the, the chain from working nicely with the cassette. For multi-speed chains, there are two quick link models. One is like this and this one is a bit tricky to mount and dismount, I don't like it. It also acts as a pair of, of outer plates, but in order to, to use it, here we'll show it. In order to use this kind of quick link, you also need two pairs of, of inner, inner plates on both sides of the chain. Okay. 
now we have two pairs of inner plates inside here and inside here and now we have to put one side of this over the the quick link this quick link has grooves as you can see here you can see the groove here where this slides in so we just we need the wider section here it is you can see that one section is a bit wider and the way it's done is that we put this wide section in over this and slide it all the way forward and then we place this it over the the other pin and now we need to bend the chain inwards we'll place the this over it and now we need to slide this over put it over here and now let's try to bend the chain okay and that's it for disassembling this quick link you need to do this in reverse so you bend it bend the chain a bit and you need to push this out sometimes you'll need a, a help of a screwdriver or a third hand yes definitely so I'm bending the chain and that's it it's not very very convenient and I don't really like these kinds of quick links but you will often see this on some KMC single speed chains and even on multi speed ones now the other design of quick links is like this these are two links that are have a wider section near the inside so that you can bring them closer and get them in over each other and then as you tighten the chain this will move all the way to the back and lock it effectively locking it in place these quick links can be reused multiple time to, times to assemble and disassemble chains for chains up to 8 speeds and when you when you're trying to connect a chain you need to find a link for that number of speeds because uh, chains with more speeds are narrower on the outside and so you cannot use a quick link that is too wide for that chain or too narrow because it will either not fit or not lock properly another catch is that uh, some chains for nine and more speeds have quick links that are designed with this being too too narrow in order to reduce width and so it is not recommendable to reuse them several times because there's very little material here in this section that needs to hold this locked that's already thinned down a bit in order to accommodate the other end when it slides in and on chains with multiple speeds this needs with more than nine speeds with nine and more speeds this needs to be flat in line not protruding like this and so if you reuse them several times to close and open the chain whether you want to clean it or for whatever reason they are considered to not be very safe and most manufacturers don't recommend reusing the same quick link but you need to buy another one so the way this works i will show it now with an eight speed chain here we have one we have two pairs of inner plates again for most quick link for all the quick links you need you use only inner plates because they act as outer plates so you put one on one side and the other on the opposite side of the the other side of the chain and then you place them over each other you keep this tightly pushed against each other and then you just tighten the chain very strongly and here it's locked in place now in order to disconnect them there are special tools to do this but you can also do, do it by hand or using some pliers you do, the, do this by pressing it on the outside and pushing the opposite sides against each other that's what i'm trying to do i'm pushing it on the outside to remove the pin out of the groove 
and I'm pushing the opposite sides for it to, to unlock. So let's see how, how I do this with my bare hands on a clean new chain it should be. Here it is, I've unlocked it. Okay, that's it. With nine or more speeds we, we won't be reusing quick links. Okay, and now for, for nine and more speeds there are quick links that are single use or Shimano has these like special drivers. So when you want to connect a chain using this, you push it as you, you need the one pair of inner links and one pair of outer links in order to do that. And so we need to create that on this chain. Okay, now we have inner plates with the roller and outer plates. We put them, line them up against each other and then you drive this in. You drive it with the chain tool that I'll show how it's used later all the way in until this part is completely out. And then you just break off this part and the chain is connected. You need the driver, this driver pin or whatever it's called in English properly for to match the number of speeds that the chain is for because of its width. And these are single use only also. And now there is another way to connect the chains that are for eight speeds or fewer or fewer. You can use the the pins, the pins of the chain to connect them. To do that, here we have an old chain that will probably work to demonstrate this. To do that you need one inner link and one outer link where the, the pin is not driven all the way out. Because you want something to catch on when you put, when you connect the chain to keep it in place. So you need to just slide this in with a bit of force, twisting and bending. I'll try to slide it in. This is easier done on a new chain. Okay, here it is. I put it in and now to start I usually use pliers to get it going. Okay, it started now and now I can use a chain tool to finish the job. In order to connect a chain using a chain tool, you put it next to the thick part of the chain tool, the, 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 most one, the one most to the side. Okay, this was a bad idea perhaps orient it like this because this chain is very short okay I hope you can see how I've aligned this I try to make sure it's parallel and it's seated all the way down okay mm, let's see okay hope that's visible and now I'm starting to drive it in making sure it's aligned and I'm pushing it I need to get it back okay. like this. Okay. This one is not really well centered. I need to use my hand. It's an old worn chain that is too short. So it's a bit fiddly job. I'm trying to push against the center of the pin to drive it in. Okay, I've got it. Okay, and you want to make sure that it is, this is the one we drove in, that is, it is symmetrical on both sides. If it's getting a bit stuck, like this one, it's not working very smoothly, you can just bend the chain sideways to create a bit of lee leeway. Or you can use this other section of the chain tool in order to push the 
pins a bit further apart. So here it's against this inner side and there's nothing pushing the, the other side of the chain. So I can, when I start using my chain tool, it will drive one side a bit further out. Okay, let's give it a try. It's no longer stuck. So that's why these other plates are, that's what these other plates are used for. So that's another way to connect the chain by reusing the pins. It works for six, seven, eight speeds and single speeds, but not for nine and more speeds. However, there are some exotic single speed chains like this one that are too wide on the outside and they will not fit inside the chain tool. This is a very tight fit and it does slide in, but not every chain will. In that case, you need a chain tool like this one. This chain tool has adjustable end, so when you place a chain inside, you can adjust this to push the chain against these plates to create some back pressure. You don't tighten it too much, just, just enough to hold it in place. You don't want to be the chain to be completely loose, to not be hitting against the, the back. So this is too much out and as soon as I turn it a bit to start pushing the chain, that's good, that's all right. And now I can start driving my chain tool inside in order to disassemble or connect this kind of, of chain. So having a tool like this is a bit less convenient for most chains, but on some chains it's a necessary one to have. It works a bit slower, it's not as practical as this one. I'll put links to these products in the video description. This one is by Bike Hand model YC324S. It's not bad. This one is by Junior. They have a newer model that I've ordered and haven't yet tested. The model is 1647 slash 2ABI. I'll put a link to the newest version in this video's description. And I wanted to show this one. This is also by hand, but I'm not sure which model. It's here, it says SL, I don't know what this is, 326666 or 69. It's a very poor quality chain tool that is uh, starting to bend outwards. It's not, it's not visible, but when you try to connect or disconnect the chain using it, you get all sorts of problems and it's a waste of money. It wasn't expensive, several, a few dollars, but it's, uh, it's not very good. So I hope, I think I've covered everything and uh, I hope you now uh, understand the basics of bicycle chain disconnecting and reconnecting them so that we can get on with the video about bicycle, bicycle chain sizing. Uh, that's all. Thank you for watching and cheers.